What's up, everybody? How we doing? We feeling good, y'all? We feeling good. Feeling great. Mm. <laughs> I am. I'm feeling really good today. Yeah. Good. Personally. It's a beanie kind of day, and that's all we need, right, Grace? Yep. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. It's getting a little colder outside. Yeah, it's kind of fun, though. I almost just started singing a Christmas song. Did oh, you? No. Yeah, and that's Have you guys, that's have you guys to listened to a Christmas song yet? Yes, I sing them in seminary. Oh, already? Yep. Holy Do you start right after Halloween? What's your rule? Yep. November 1st. November 1st. That's when my family going. always has decorated for Christmas. Welcome to This Is Kingdom. This is Grace. This is Talon. This is TJ. And this is Hollis. Speaking of exciting things, <laughs> <laughs> the worst transition ever. <laughs> Speaking of exciting things, um, we have something so fun mm-hmm. and pretty. Oh, it is. Mostly pretty. Anyways, you guys, this is something that the Good News Brand does, and it's like the cutest, coolest thing ever that we're obsessed with. It's called 60th North because that's the address of the conference center, in case any of you were automatically confused. I don't even know if you could see this. It might be really far away. But it's a cute, like, it's like a little tiny magazine, and it has, like, all these highlights from conference, but they're pretty. But we have to tell them about our favorite page. There's a page, because I'm kind of with you on this. There's a page that has every promise from general conference. So oh you my. can just soak it in. I'm going to stall while Grace tries to get there. She's there. There it is, oh, y'all. That's the page. That's that smart. Feel good. So basically, I was hyped about this because it's your spark notes of conference. And it's cute. You guys, that's why I'm stoked cute about it. spark notes. Yeah. And so if you that's ever just need like a little like pick me up or if you want to cut it out because it's so pretty and put it on your walls, that's fun too. And it's so cheap. So everyone go to goodnewsbrandco.com. Read some books. And get that because it's so cute <laughs> and you're going to love stuff. it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Let's get it. And this week, we'll be going over the talk Kingdoms of Glory by the one and only President Dallin H. Oaks. Okay. this Sometimes I feel like this is true, I think, no matter who you are. I don't know why this happens to us. I think it's just because we're currently living on earth in like really present time. But I think sometimes when it comes to something that seems so far away like heaven or is just like something as unknown as heaven— a lot of questions come up. And sometimes the unknown is a little bit hard. Like that's a hard discussion. That's a hard topic. And sometimes even when we hear, like get more information about it, it kind of still stays like that. That we're just like, oh, I don't even know. And I think usually when we like talk about things, we start at the beginning. Even when we talk about these talks, we start at the beginning. But today I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to start at the end. um, Because I think that's like a really, I think there's something really powerful in the end of this talk. And what happens is President Oaks actually says, it's like almost near the end, he actually says, there's much we do not know about the three major periods in the plan of salvation. And I think that's a really important thing to realize is that actually there's still a lot of unknown that comes with this topic. And sometimes the unknown can make it hard and it can make it hurt and it's a little bit hard to figure out. And I think it's important to be aware of that, that like actually some, there's like some unknown in this and like that's important to be addressed. But I think how he finishes is one of the coolest ways ever because he actually in his testimony says, I testify of our Lord Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, whose atonement under the plan of our Father in heaven makes it all possible. And I think it's important to realize that no matter who you are, actually Jesus Christ, the one who not only knows your story, but actually is the author of your story and the finisher, which means he is actually the one in charge of ending your story, is the one who is taking care of the plan of salvation. That's important to me to realize that it's like, oh, actually, he knows your story perfectly. He knows exactly who you are because he actually authored it. And he is going to make sure it finishes on a good note. But not only that, it's actually all possible because of him. That is the plan of salvation, is actually that someone that good is in charge of your life. But I think it's cool because, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, it's kind of cool that he just gives like a summary. I didn't realize that his last paragraph is like, let me just give you a summary of all of this. And his summary is Jesus. Yeah. You know, and I think sometimes we like draw all the circles with plan of salvation, which is great. And it's good to know that stuff. But in the end, like the plan of salvation is Jesus. It's, it's yeah. following him. It's learning about him. It's coming to him and it's letting him turn you into celestial being. So I just, I didn't even notice that before that he sums it up in that last paragraph. So I love that. Yeah. And it's really interesting to me because I think when we talk about the plan of salvation, there's so many different things to talk about and so many different things to focus on. And especially when you're thinking about life. And one of my favorite parts about it is that he actually kind of like 
the way he describes it is so interesting. And there's one like little quote that he says that like changes the way I personally think about the plan of salvation, which is cool, like cool. Because what he says is in contrast to other preaching, which teaches us to know something, the gospel of Jesus Christ challenges us to become something. And then all of a sudden, the plan of salvation isn't saying that one day in heaven, you're going to sit down and it's going to be a test. And if you pass the test, great. Like you're going to make it. Like that's going to be good. It's actually going to be so different than that. In the end, it's actually going to be a matter of, oh, who did you become while you were down there? And I think that there's something powerful in realizing that because I think sometimes we think of earth and we think of it just as like a test and you either pass or fail. And I think, yeah, there's tests on earth. We get tested. Our faith gets tested. Our patience gets tested. Our hope gets tested. That is true. But the whole purpose of this isn't a test. A test is to figure out if you know something or not. When in reality, the plan of salvation is to see who you became. And all of a sudden, then it's like, okay, yeah, if I messed up and this didn't work out how I thought and I've made a hundred million mistakes, oh, actually, who am I going to become after the mistake? The mistake didn't mean I failed. It means I'm growing because I'm trying to become something. No, I love that. I feel like sometimes in our quest to become, we get so obsessed if we're making the wrong or right choice. Yeah. I feel like there's so many times like, wait, am I taking the right path? Am I becoming more like Christ or am I doing the wrong thing? But I feel like in our quest towards the unknown, we get kind of scared. Right? It's like if it's something unknown, like whether something that happens after life or something in our life, we get really scared and anxious. But I feel like the unknown makes room for God to do his work in our lives if we're really working on becoming. And it's all about our choices. And it's something I've been really thinking about is like, can we really make the wrong choice when Christ is our goal, when we're trying to become like him? Because whatever choice you do make in this life, if Christ is your goal, he will always magnify that choice and make and help you make a better choice in the future too. You know, I feel like our choices when Christ is in mind can help us become like you were saying. Yeah. Amen, man. Yeah, no, I just, uh, hearing you guys talk, I, I think of my, my students and one question I love to ask to them as we're trying to look at the plan of salvation and seeing God and Jesus at the center of it is just asking like, what do you learn about Christ and his character and God and his character? And one thing I love is, and he kind of highlights it in this quote, kind of towards the end of the talk, he says, we have a loving heavenly father who will see that we receive every blessing and every advantage that our own desires and choices allow. And so I love when we, when we look at the plan, and we, we pay attention to the author of that plan. Um, we're able to see someone who has a, has a place for everyone, has a path for everyone, and is going to really like set us up. Like, I love that he's a God that sets us up. You know what I mean? We invest in him. We turn to him. We trust in him. We follow him. And he sets us up. That's his plan. I love that about his plan. Well, and it's cool because that's like, I feel like that's such an interesting way of thinking about things. Because once you start realizing that this is actually about Jesus helping you become something more. I think everything in your life changed. Like it, that is such a perspective changer for me because then all of a sudden I start thinking back in my life and I'm like, okay, yeah. Like actually when I was just absolutely getting wrecked by my mental health, like two years ago, I'm like, oh, actually I don't have to resent God for that. I don't have to be frustrated and I don't have to be angry at myself for the things that were happening at that period in my life because I can stop and I can be like, oh, actually the plan is me becoming something. And if the plan isn't me being really happy every single day, the plan is actually who I'm going to become. And so that period of my life, I'm like, oh, actually, did that help me become something more? Yeah. And all those times that I just like, after I just like messed up so bad and you're just like, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but like after I just messed up, like, it's just like that. There's just like this feeling in my stomach, you know, that is just like, oh my gosh, like for real grace, you know? And I'm just like, oh, actually, I don't like, I don't have to hate myself for that feeling. I don't have to be so angry at myself for that feeling because I can actually stop and say, you know what? Did that feeling help me become something more? Yeah. So I don't think God's angry at me about that feeling. And I think the reason he's not is because I became something because of it. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, that actually changes my day to day because I think in heaven, instead of sitting down and taking a test, I'm going to sit down and have a conversation with God. And we're going to talk about all my favorite moments that I became something with him. Yeah, when you realize it's about what you become, the other thing that it changes when you stop worrying about the sum of good and bad things that you've done, it doesn't become how many times did you read your scriptures in your life? It doesn't become yeah. how many times did you go to church? It becomes, okay, how did going to church change you and develop you? And how did you become as a person when you were reading your scriptures? And how did your, how did your prayers change who you are? And I think so many times we're worried about 
checking off all these things and saying, okay, I did it, I did it, I did it, instead of, am I changing through this process? And I think that's God's whole goal. Like these things that he's asking us to do aren't just to have a checklist of things to do. Every single thing he asks us to do is to help us become more like he is. And I think if we aren't focused on that, we're missing the purpose of these things. So can I ask this question for you guys? What, like in in the real life day to day, what helps you guys take a step back and pay attention to more of how God is helping you become instead of focusing on like what you're supposed to do? Oh, I think that's such a great question. That actually reminds me of one of my like top five favorite quotes. And it's Hollis is the quote man. Yo, yeah. I love I quotes. I memorize quotes. <laughs> like, oh, I got like 25 okay. favorites, but I'll, I'll stick to top five right now. <laughs> and that quote is, we don't change from experience, but we change from reflecting on experience. And I love that because so much of the time we're just experiencing things in life. And sometimes we get hard on ourselves a lot when things keep happening. We're like, why does this keep happening to me? But I think there's no coincidence that a lot of the things God has us do to become closer to him, like prayer, going to Sunday school, going to the temple, all these things require us to be still and reflective. And I feel like we can feel ourselves changing in those still moments because we're allowing ourselves to think about how these experiences change us or how these experiences change us. And just like Grace did right here, she's like, oh, there's been times I've like made these mistakes. When she was reflecting, she's like, oh, it helped her make a better decision in the future because she took time to reflect. I feel like reflection is a holy thing that God allows us to do for us to become closer to him. Mm. One of the top five quotes, y'all. There it is. <laughs> yes, nice. Another thing that I love like day to day, here's the difference, okay? If you're looking at the final judgment as a sum of the good and bad things that we've done versus what we've become, you're going to ask yourself at the end of the day, did I pray? That's a, that's a good question. That's a fine question. But a better question is, did I better understand God's perspective today? Did I come to better understand how he sees things, how he feels about things? Did I connect to God today? And it's just a different question to evaluate what we did. Praying is good, but letting God change your perspective through prayer is better. I mm, love that. Okay, I think one thing for me, okay, I read this book and it changed my life. It was like, it's like legit one of my favorite books of all time. And what what's, happens? What's, you got to tell us the book. I will. You guys, I Did read you forget two books. the name? I, I forgot just, the name. Yeah, oh. I read two books by the you, same Hopefully guy. it's real. It's one of your favorite you books. Guys. Hopefully it's real. <laughs> okay, listen, it's by Donald Miller. I don't know. I don't remember which story. I don't remember which book it is because I read two <laughs> recently of his. Anyways, the whole book, he like is talking about um, life and he's like talking about in the end heaven and like meeting God for the first time in this whole experience, which I think is really applicable to the plan of salvation because that is the plan of salvation, right? And what happens in it is he goes through and at the very end of the book, he says something that has completely changed my life. And he just says, I don't wonder anymore what I'll tell God. Oh, wait, I forgot about this. Is because he had this moment when he was realizing, like when he thought of heaven, what was going to happen. And he's like, I realized that when I got to heaven, I didn't know what I would say to God. Like when I got there, he was like, what am I going to say? Like, uh, what did I do with my life? And I, it made me think of that, Tal, because I was like, oh yeah, sometimes when we get to, like we think about heaven and we're like, oh, it's going to be like this list of like, oh yeah, God, I prayed this many times and I didn't miss a single day of scripture reading and I did this and this and this and this. And that's not going to be a really long conversation if you're just telling them facts. But then he said this, I don't wonder anymore what I'll tell God when I go to heaven. When we sit in the chairs under the tree outside the city, I'll tell him. And then he starts listing all of these experiences that have helped shape who he is as a person. And at the very end, he says, I'll tell these things to God and he'll laugh. I think, and he'll remind me of the parts I forgot, the parts that were his favorites. We'll sit and we'll remember my story together. And then he'll stand and he'll put his arm, his arm around me and say, well done. And that he liked my story and my soul won't be thirsty anymore. And it has changed the way I think, because all of a sudden in my head, I'm like, that actually is a story about who I became. It's not a story of a checklist and it's not what I have or haven't done, but it's actually this moment when I'll sit down with the author and finisher of my story, the one who knows me completely, the one that knows the insides and outsides of my life. I'll sit down next to him and I'll be able to realize, oh, actually I became something down there. All of this added up, all these stories of my life, the goods, the bads, the ugly ones, the mistakes, like that all led to who I became. That's something I want to talk to God about. Mm. Teach me to walk in the light of His love. 
Teach me to pray to my Father above. Teach me to know of the things that are right. Teach me, teach me to walk in the love. so crazy. I love that. See you guys next week. Oh. <laughs>